Hello and welcome back to the MMA Bar. Today, we're going to discuss the first event in UFC history, why it was created, the circumstances surrounding it, and precise highlights of the fight. Basically, time travel back to 1993. So, sit tight and relax. 29 years ago, one man set out to answer the eternal question. Who is the ultimate fighter? On 12 November 1993, Art Davy and Associates hosted the street fight to end all street fights. As eight fearless competitors from across the world gathered in a Colorado octagon to see who was the toughest. The co-creators of the event were Art Davy and Rory and Gracie, who put this together to determine which martial art would prevail when pitted against one another. The organizers set about creating the tournament, and although attempted to call it War of the Worlds, they changed the decision and named it Ultimate Fighting Championship. Because War of the Worlds was too science fiction-y. UFC promoters initially pitched the event as a real-life fighting video game tournament similar to Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter. They wanted it to look brutal on television, so John Melius, one of Rory and Gracie's students and a Hollywood veteran who had directed Conan the Barbarian, decided the fight should take place in an octagonal cage fence with chain link. They wanted people to consider the championship a live televised version of Mortal Kombat. Because the video game was popular, and victorious fighters got to finish their opponents through moves such as ripping their spines out of their bodies, this brutal standpoint was a good selling point for the UFC. Davey even suggested that they top the cage with razor blade. Thankfully, this was rejected. With the venue said to be at McNichols Sports Arena in Denver, Colorado, the eight-man roster also began to take shape. Martial artists in Savate, kickboxing, taekwondo, shoot fighting, boxing, sumo, American kenpo, and of course, Brazilian jiu-jitsu were booked in. The plan for the eight-man tournament was for the winner to take home $50,000. There was one alternate fight in case one of the tournament fighters were to get injured and need replacing. The beauty of UFC 1 is that nobody seems to know what's going on. The referees aren't sure when to stop the fight, the fighters don't know when to stop fighting, and the main problem seems to not be the lack of rules but the lack of basic protocol. The event slogan was that there were no rules and also no weight classes, no rounds, and no judges. The only pathway to victory would be to knock out or submit your opponent, or the opposition's corner could throw in the towel. As promotion for UFC 1 gathered pace with the marketing slogan, there are no rules, so did the opposition to it. Senator John McCain wanted it banned and branded the concept of a human cockfight. Fighters grab each other's clothes, stomp on their downed opponents, pull their hair, elbow them in the spine, and punch them in the back of the head. Although being billed as having no rules, there were limitations on what the fighters could do, including no biting, no groin shots, and no eye gouging. About 7,800 spectators turned up at the McNichol Sports Arena in Denver to witness the action live, with a further 86,000 tuning in on pay-per-view, three times what the promoters anticipated, and many more heading to their local video store to rent the tournament on VHS in the aftermath. This is the story of UFC 1, The Beginning. It was the first mixed martial arts event by the Ultimate Fighting Championship, or UFC, held on November 12, 1993. The event was broadcast live on pay-per-view and later released on home video. With the winner receiving $50,000, the tournament had no weight classes and consisted of fights to the finish with 5-minute time limits and unlimited rounds. The match only ended by submission, knockout, or throwing in the towel. The first fight of the night and of UFC history pits Dutch kickboxer Gerard Gordo against the Hawaiian sumo wrestler Taylor Tuli, who outweighed Gordo by nearly 200 pounds. They circle to start before Tuli rushes in to try and pin Gordo against the fence, but eats some punches for his efforts, and Tuli loses his footing and ends up on his knees next to the cage. Gordo takes this opportunity and kicks Tuli square in the face, which causes one of Tuli's teeth to fly out of the octagon, landing near the commentary desk, and then follows up with the right hand to the face for good measure. 
The referee instantly stops the fight. Tully isn't happy about the stoppage, but he is a bloody mess with his mouth busted open, a cut over his eye, and not to mention a missing tooth. Two other teeth were stuck in Gordo's foot, and the whole fight lasted 26 seconds, but this was quite an eventful opener. In the second quarter final bout, we have former American heavyweight kickboxing champion Kevin Rosier against karate champion Zane Frazier in another clash of fighting styles. Rosier looks like he has the size advantage as the fight gets underway and he puts the pressure on Frazier from the get-go, landing an overhand right and knee dropping Frazier. After taking an elbow to the back of the head, Frazier pops back up and they begin to trade against the fence. Frazier lands some knees and punches of his own and starts landing good uppercuts that have Rosier in trouble as both fighters start to tire. Frazier manages to get Rosier down and lands a knee before they both pop back up again and start engaging against the fence. Both fighters are really tired now and punches are coming more slowly. Rosier starts landing more punches, causing Frazier to drop against the cage. Rosier then turns to foot stomps, which causes Frazier's corner to throw in the towel to save their fighter from receiving any more damage. This fight ran for 4 minutes and 20 seconds, a little longer than the first with both fighters gassing out towards the end. Although Rosier had a little more in the engine, Frazier just ran out of steam. The third quarter final of the night had shoot fighter Ken Shamrock, who was the number one ranked fighter for the Japanese promotion Pancrase at the time, against another kickboxing champion Pat Smith. The fight gets underway and Shamrock comes out quickly and gets Smith in a body lock, instantly taking him to the ground. Looking clueless on the ground, Smith just holds onto Shamrock so that he is unable to strike him. Shamrock then decides to drop back for a heel hook and Smith attempts to strike Shamrock with kicks and elbows but eventually taps out. Another fight then that didn't take long. Shamrock states post-fight that Smith had no knowledge of submissions which made this fight easy for him. This fight lasted less than two minutes. The final quarter-final matchup was between Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu master Royce Gracie and boxer Art Jimerson. Ron Machado joins the commentary team to detail how great a grappler Gracie is and that Jimerson must keep the fight standing. Jimerson oddly comes out wearing just one boxing glove whilst Gracie enters the octagon while wearing a white G. Jimerson's one-glove style is one of the most iconic images of UFC 1. The fight begins and Gracie throws a few kicks to keep the boxer Jimerson at bay and then explodes forward taking him to the ground, working quickly from side mount to full mount. Jimerson begins to panic as Gracie begins landing some strikes and before Gracie even attempts a submission, the boxer taps out due to frustration and panic of being pinned to the ground. A strange ending to the fight there but the inevitable happened as Jimerson looked doomed from the moment the fight hit the floor. With four of the eight fighters winning, the winning fighters progressed in the competition and it was time for the semi-finals. The first semi-final bout of the evening had Jared Gordo against Kevin Rosier. Gordo had a quick fight in his quarter-final bout as it only lasted 26 seconds. Whereas Rosier was pretty tired in his first fight as he had a 5-minute brawl with Zane Frazier. The fight starts and Rosier is the one doing the pursuing. Gordo fires off some leg kicks to keep him at bay, which causes Rosier's leg to buckle. He then follows up with a combination, dropping Rosier. Gordo keeps his distance but keeps rushing in whenever Rosier begins to climb to his feet. Rosier begins to turtle up and Gordo lands some nasty stomps causing Rosier's corner to throw in the towel. Yet another short fight here as Rosier came out looking to put away his opponent quickly but was met with the fresh kickboxing skills of Gordo. The second semi-final fight of the event was a clash between Royce Gracie and Ken Shamrock. This was the most anticipated fight of the evening so far as both Gracie and Shamrock looked to have knowledge of grappling skills and both defeated their opponents quickly in the quarter-final bouts. The fight begins and Gracie looks for the takedown right away. Shamrock defends well and ends up being on top. 
Racing Lansom heel strikes from the bottom, Shamrock attempts to grab the leg for a submission. But Gracie defends well and now he is the one on top. Shamrock sits up and attempts to grab the leg again, but this time Gracie switches to side back mount and wraps his arms around Shamrock's neck using his jai to choke him and Shamrock taps. The referee didn't seem to see the tap but Gracie shouts at the ref assuring him that he did indeed tap, which Shamrock doesn't protest. Well, this is the first competitive fight of the evening we saw take place on the ground with both Gracie and Shamrock showing their grappling skills with the Brazilian coming out on top. Winning the fight by G Choke, the fight lasted just 57 seconds. With Jared Gordo and Royce Gracie coming on top in their semi-final matches, fans had a very interesting fight on their hands in the final. The winner takes it all. The final bout featured Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu versus Kickboxing. This is possibly the first televised classic fight between Striker versus Grappler. The fight begins and Gracie immediately attempts to take Gordo to the ground. The Dutchman defends well and they end up against the fence in the clinch. Eventually, Gracie gets Gordo to the ground and quickly gains the mount position. He lands a couple of strikes including headbutts to prompt Gordo to turn his back. Once his back is turned, Gracie wastes no time in locking up a rear naked choke and taps the Dutchman a few seconds later. This was another short fight for Gracie who made quick work of all his opponents on the night and is rewarded with $50,000. He celebrates with his family in the cage afterward saying that it was his technique that won him his fights. Gracie is considered the most influential figure in MMA history following his heroics at UFC 1. The Gracie family purposely put forward a smaller man to enter the tournament to highlight their dangerous brand of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. At UFC 1, when Royce made his debut, no one thought much about him. He was a small, almost unknown Brazilian fighter. He enjoyed a remarkable night and stunned three bigger and stronger opponents to win UFC 1. Gracie's dominant ground display resulted in three submission victories. The impact he had was monumental and his showings contributed to the movement towards grappling. A true pioneer. The event and its outcome catapulted Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, also known as Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, to new heights in the United States and worldwide. Its gate and pay-per-view buys ensured that there would be more UFCs in the near future, which proved to be the case. Thank you for watching this video. That's all for now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell.